Secretary Gardham. Now, the way this is going to proceed is... Our purpose here, as we have said from the outset, is to make a good agreement even better, and specifically to make improvements that help create jobs and opportunities for middle-class families in all three of our countries. Yet, in rounds three and four, we have seen proposals that would turn back the clock on 23 years of predictability, openness, and collaboration under NAFTA. In some cases, these proposals run counter to WTO rules. This is troubling. We cannot forget that NAFTA has enabled the creation of sophisticated supply chains that allow our companies to make things together and sell them to the world. Nowhere is that more apparent than in our auto industry. Proposed new U.S. national content requirements would severely disrupt these supply chains, make North American producers and manufacturers less competitive relative to imports from outside the region, and put in jeopardy tens of thousands of jobs across North America. I also thank the Congressional and Cleared Advisors. They have reviewed and helped us. At the beginning of the summer, Vice President Mike Pence told the governors gathered in Rhode Island that he believed a win-win-win outcome would be achieved in these negotiations. Canada believes that, too. But that cannot be achieved with a winner-take-all mindset or an approach that seeks to undermine NAFTA rather than modernize it. Thank you. Ambassador Lighthizer, thank you for your hospitality in this port. Uh, the U.S. and Canada rescue teams were fundamental in helping us really cope with disaster. Now, we are also thankful for the assistance that you are still providing in the aftermath of the process and definitely proves once more that the alliance of the three nations in times of need is essential and helps to build good relationships for the future. Nearly everyone involved has been working 12-hour days. Mexico will continue working, seeking constructive and creative solutions, and being open to a dialogue. But in order for these efforts of Mexico, the United States, and Canada to be fruitful, we must understand that we all have limits. Despite our current differences, we must ensure that decisions we make today do not come back to haunt us tomorrow. The United States had two objectives in these talks. NAFTA has resulted in a huge trade deficit for the United States and has cost us tens of thousands of manufacturing jobs. The agreement has become very lopsided and needs to be rebalanced. We, of course, have a 500 billion dollar trade deficit. So for us, trade deficits do matter. And we intend to reduce them. Rows of white, white crosses from the conference site. It is important also to remember that to some extent, NAFTA is an investment agreement. And it is unreasonable to expect, expect that the United States will continue to encourage and guarantee U.S. companies to invest in Mexico and Canada, primarily for export to the United States. All parties must understand this and be reasonable if there is any chance for these negotiations to be successful. We have now had four months, uh, four rounds, and 22 days of negotiation. 